Oh, Jesus! Oh, God! Oh, God! Holy oh, shit! Oh, shit! What have I done? What have you done? What have you done? Hey, 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 everybody out there. How are you doing? It's the Renegades, and we're back again with more Seth Zintok. And this one was requested in our Discord by... Was it me? The Shaggy Defense? It was. Really? I did it. The Shaggy Defense? Well, two people requested it in the comment section, and I was about to just be like, go request it in our Discord. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll go request it in our Discord. <laughs> and there we go. And here we, and here we sit. So... Because uh, I like Deus Ex. It was an awesome yes, game. Yes. One of his favorite games. And Deus Ex is a game that is considered by many to be a pivotal moment in gaming. It's one of the first, like, choose how you play kind of games. It and System Shock 2, you mentioned both of them, you know, both of these were around the same time and both of them introduced ways. It's like, oh, you can now, go by I this never, way. I never you played System Shock way. 1. If System Shock 1 is like System Shock 2, then Deus Ex might have actually been inspired by System Shock 1. Maybe. I mean, I never played System Shock 1. I did play System Shock 2. But yeah, 2 is like, you know, you can play it either like kind of semi-stealthily. Like you can melee, you can use weapons like guns, or you can use psychic powers. Which yeah. was neat because they had this little orb that like plugged into your fucking arm. And that's how you <laughs> use psychic powers. You had like a basically an amplifier. And and the crazy thing is the the system, you know, system Shock Two was developed by Irrational Games, the same people who developed the Bioshock franchise. And Bioshock is was considered a um, a spiritual successor to System Shock. Uh, the System Shock franchise. Yeah, I'd actually never heard of System Shock until Bioshock was announced, and I was reading about it in Game Informer and magazine, you know, because that's how I got my gaming news back in the day. As you do. And they were like, spiritual successor to System Shock 2, and I was like, what's System Shock 2? And I started reading about it, and I was like, that sounds really cool. So I went and, uh, and uh, I, let's say I acquired a copy of it. You know, yeah, okay. And, uh, so. You knew a guy who Obviously, guy. there was no place to get a physical copy of it at the time, but... Unfortunately, yeah. I got a hold of it, and I played through it, and I liked it a lot, and it scared the crap out of me several times. Yes. Um, and for me, I look back on when I played it. I played it, I think it was... Gosh, I remember... I remember it was at my grandparents' house, and I... A friend of mine recommended it to me. A friend of mine recommended it to me, and... I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And my grandma had the best PC that I knew. It was a it was a multi-core PC, so it was capable of running basically anything I could throw at it. Well, not everything. I mean, it could do Doom. It could do Castle Wolfenstein. It could do basically all the like big PC games back in the day. And System Shock 2, you know, in some ways pushed it to its limit. Uh, I remember it crashing a couple times. I was like, no! Dang it! And I restarted it, and I got to that point again. It didn't crash, but then enough time would go by again, and it crashed again. And I was just like, "Well, fuck. Okay, I guess, I guess that's just the way things are right now." Yeah, I was but, always gaming on my parents' computer, which was just a Dell. <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, I ended up actually buying an old graphics card at one point. At the time, it was a different port than what you even have for graphics cards. It was uh, was it a VGA? Before, yeah, VGA. That was it. There was a VGA graphics card, and I plugged God, it into my parents' VGA, Dell, and it actually let me video. finally play games like Fear and stuff. Uh, even though it was still a low frame rate, it at least let me run the damn game. Well, okay. Well, that's enough of an intro. Let's go ahead and uh, react to this. Here we go. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Today, I will be covering an older game yes, that, at the time, was considered the computer. best conspiracy simulator on the market, Deus Ex. <laughs> Looking back now, it was a scarily accurate prediction of a future. Despite being made a full year before the 9-11 attacks, Deus Ex depicted our world in 30 years as an authoritarian dystopia. In other words, they were 30 years off. In this bleak future, there's only the super wealthy and the super fucking poor. The only food available is candy candy bars, and soybeans. The only safe drinking water is orange soda, and 10 packs of cigarettes are now strong enough to kill you instantly. For this reason, <laughs> secondhand smoking is now the preferred method of postnatal abortion. Or, wow. if you wow. a friendly solution, you could also try jabbing your ungrateful spawn with a cattle prod, then put them up for adoption in the ocean. Deus Ex is an amazing <laughs> game, and I'm glad people pushed me to replay it. You appreciate it more in your man-child 
the years. Anyway, plot. You play as J.C. Denton. The J.C. stands for... Jesus Christ, Denton. You're one of two nano-augmented <laughs> brothers trained from a young age to be elite agents of UNATCO, the United Nations Anti-Terror Coalition, which was founded after terrorists bombed the Statue of Liberty. And as expected, everybody thinks it was an inside job to justify <laughs> increased surveillance and create a supranational entity that could operate outside and above the jurisdiction of individual countries. This is nonsense. The true purpose of UNATCO is to protect you and all free citizens of the world from terror. A war on terror, if you will. Your job is to investigate, arrest, and kill terrorists across the world, but not talk to them, because that's how they get you. They get in your head. They start making you ask funny questions. And before you know it, bang! You're a liberal. If you shoot on sight <laughs> and follow orders without question, you'll go far in UNATCO. Also, the world is suffering an outbreak of infectious disease called the Grey Death, and the only cure for it is a vaccine called Ambrosia. Well, it's not really a vaccine. A vaccine would treat you, not temporarily halt progression for 48 hours. Did I mention there's not enough vaccine to go around, but just enough to make sure the most important members of our society get it? Namely, bureaucrats, politicians, and any person with wealth and influence. That's quite a coincidence, <laughs> isn't it? But don't think on it too much. That's for philosophers. Don't be one of those Greek homos. Problem is, these terrorist groups keep stealing shipments of ambrosia. And lord forbid, if ambrosia gets into the hands of the poor, I'm gonna have a stroke. It's not a pretty world, JC, but we all gotta make sacrifices. Some more than others. A lot more than oh others. Oh my god, anyway, of I course. I won't spoil too much of a story for you, wow. but let's just say that in Deus Ex, the ruling elite control all of the banking, communications, and biotech industries. They were all in a happy agreement. Exploit and steal from everybody else. It was harmony. It was peace. Then, one of them said, we have... This is sounding very, very familiar to certain things that are going on in the modern era. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, it's uh, textbook corporatism. Yeah, and that's exactly what we have here. <laughs> Controlling the masses through mass media and not allowing viewpoints, you know, other viewpoints through. Sounds familiar. I'm putting uh, monetary uh, walls up for necessities. Yeah. Instead of letting them be available at you know at what the market could declare but instead oh no we control the market that's basically what that's basically what it is we have an incurable virus why the fuck do we need the rest of you and now they are no longer in a happy agreement every secret society the illuminati the bilderbergs the rothschilds the bogdanovs wu-tang clan they're all in complete <laughs> turmoil and it's all a grand conspiracy for control of a modern world for enacting a new world order unfortunately you're caught up in the middle of all this and like it or not your choices and actions will shape the world don't think I won't report this. For better you, or worse. By the way, Devin, stay out of the ladies' restroom. That kind of activity <laughs> embarrasses the agency more than it does you. Gameplay. It's very good. There's a fuck ton of controls, but they're very good controls. In case you have lost your keyboard since the last video, I recommend getting a new one. The UI records absolutely everything. It's fantastic. You can even add your own notes. Skills are self-explanatory, and as intelligent gamers, you will receive no explanation. Throughout the game, you get assigned to missions from UNATCO, but each location is pretty open, forcing you to investigate and fulfill side objectives in order to progress the main story. You get rewarded it's crazy for how much of this my brain constantly. is deleted the files about. Yeah, again. Like, I, I remember the opening mission, like, very well. But, like, beyond that, I'm just like, man, I forgot about so much stuff that was in this game. Jesus. There's no reason not to do it. Strangely, the NPCs of Deus Ex have a habit of dropping iPads everywhere containing their banking details and not changing their recovery passwords. Throughout my playthrough, <laughs> I have encountered not a single person who gives a shit about their financial well-being, leading me to believe that NPCs in this game are actually quite realistic depictions of people living in the first world. Let's talk about setting. Most of your missions send you out to cities. Then, you head back to the UNATCO base on Liberty Island. It's actually really nice to visit UNATCO headquarters in between missions. This is pretty much your home. You can talk with your boys, break into closets, hack everyone's computer, and get sexual harassment charges from HR. 
I've already reported you once. You Natco, we only recruit the best of the best to keep you safe. As Denton, you can use different tools to meet your objectives, depending on whether you want a loud or stealthy entrance, a trigger-happy or non-lethal solution. At the start of the game, you can even choose a starting weapon. Of course, the only correct option is the Gep Gun for silent takedowns. <laughs> you can equip yourself with whatever you can get your hands on. Some examples are cattle prods, pepper sprays, and Chinese nanoblades that refold themselves a thousand times each second just to flex on the Japanese. You get most of your weaponry. <laughs> by stealing shit from other people. You are a bionic superhuman. They can't stop you. Sometimes you'll be forced to pay for certain items or services. This is rarely a problem, since you can get most of your credits by hacking ATM machines. Shooting in Deus Ex isn't so much about speed. It's about waiting in a corner for your aiming reticle to shrink small enough to actually hit your targets. Without training, this takes about a year. With training, this still takes about a year. For this reason, the stealthy approach is much more satisfying. You peek out behind corners, and then you shoot people with tranquilizer darts, and then you run away as they scream and pass out. By the way, <laughs> did you see what happened to the soldier we sent into the statue? He turned up unconscious. No, sir. Friendly fire? Not so friendly, I'm afraid. I have opened an investigation. Dismissed. Just be careful, because sound travels in this game. And if you accidentally drop a soy packet on the ground, the seismic tremors it creates will set off every alarm on the level. For more lethal solutions, you could just use a gun. And But what's the fun in that? As a nano-augmented god, you can crush people by the sheer weight of your thighs. JC <laughs> Thick Denton fills his victims with terror in their last breathing moments. There's plenty of other... So basically you're just pulling a Mario. Boing? Plantations <laughs> you can install, which take up mutually exclusive slots in the body. No matter what you pick, they're all pretty useful, and upgrading them only makes their powers more ridiculous. Throughout the story, you go to a variety of locations and speak to a huge number of people. Even unimportant side characters usually have several lines each, and the dialogue itself is fantastic. I heard that he was a frequent visitor to this compound. Do you know him? The Romanos path is close to Guayos. JC's perpetual autism also adds to the mood of the game. He's so deadpan and emotionless that he turns serious conversation into unintentional black comedy. Oh my god, daddy! What a shame. <laughs> he can't really be... There must be something we can do. He was a good man. What a rotten way to die. As the story develops and Unatco <laughs> gradually gets infiltrated by clandestine organizations, you can uncover a lot more about the plot by being inquisitive. There's a huge fuck ton of lore spread throughout minor characters, computer terminals, newspapers, and books. As you learn more, you can so start putting now. the pieces together, find out who's pulling the strings, and practice your Latin. Also, this game predicted nuclear war between India and Pakistan. They're only one year away from becoming a superpower. Lord help us all. Real talk, <laughs> searching carefully and reading everything pays off big. It can even let you completely bypass some of the hardest fights in the game. By modern standards, Deus Ex has the graphical fidelity of blurry vintage what pornography, but no. it is completely functional. However, if it's still an eyesore for you, you can try... You want to know what that's from? Not really. <laughs> that's actually a hack. Like, he hacked the player model in The Witcher, and also there was a a hacking, uh, a anti-hack uh, piracy thing in The Witcher that made all the beautiful women into decrepit, wrinkly old ladies. Oh, lordy. So you can imagine what happens whenever love scenes occur. Yeah. So he deliberately did that just to make it, it what looked like a rock demon fucking an old lady. I don't want to see that. GMDX or the Deus Ex revision mod, they both make it very pretty. The sound design is great. Everything sounds clear and crisp, which makes the world feel genuine and authentic. Are you sure you pressed the right button? I do no. not make mistakes of that kind. Your hand might have slipped. No, I wanted orange. It gave me lemon lime. The machine would not make a mistake. It's the maintenance man. He knows I like orange. So you think the staff has some kind of plot? Yes, they do that on purpose. The music <laughs> tracks are nice too. I sometimes keep the unit. That dude is just unapologetically German. Gunter Hermann. Yeah. 
Hello, I'm Gunter Herman. I wanted the orange. I got the lemon lime instead. This makes me very unhappy. Ah! Conversation theme playing when I'm calling with the shareholders. I want big giant cocks. Deus Ex is wonderful, and it doesn't and take too long Discord to finish. Server. It may very well be the definition of a perfect game. I give it an excellent out of however many children I tased during my playthrough. <laughs> my dad says you can't get anywhere if you can't keep a secret. <laughs> So please, give it a shot. It's very cheap, and it still goes on sale from time to time. It's not for everyone. And by that I mean, if you are an illiterate, subhuman troglodyte, and you've somehow managed to evade the special needs wrangler long enough to watch this video, well, firstly, I just love that he uses Tyler 1 as an example of a troglodyte. That's the best shit ever. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, uh, if... If Tyler One saw this, he would just be like, "Ah, oh, shit! Fuck's a troglodyte." <laughs> Me Google that, and all of a sudden, as soon as he finds that, he'd be like, "Hey, I'm an alpha male. Get this beta shit off me!" <laughs> ah! I ain't ripping my shirt. I like this shirt. My my mom and or my stepdad or my stepmom and my dad gave me this shirt. That's actually very impressive, good job, but you might not enjoy this game as much. But if you are capable of having an attention span, you'll find a plot that captivates you from start to finish, with moral and ethical questions raised that leave you in a slightly higher state of being. Of course, Deus Ex takes a very extreme view of the future, but you must remember that with each day we do not question or challenge our leaders, extreme becomes absurd, absurd becomes implausible, and implausible becomes a reality. What is it, mister? I'm really hungry. You don't look that bad. Tell me what you know about the NSF. I knew it. Someday the NSF is going to win, and I'm gonna give them your description with your stupid shades, and they're gonna kick your ass. As always, <laughs> more videos to come, so stay uh, tuned. The we'll bay. also be much more upbeat. Don't worry. A drinks here half a year you think i'm gonna give a shit with those trouble that i just have to think <laughs> i'm just doing it because honestly i just i just don't know my hands do weird things sometimes i mean honestly i have no control over what they do see i mean it, it's just it's just uh, stop that I might, have to, I might have to censor that. Seriously, though, like, look up Carmel Dancing real quick. Uh, hold on. C A R M E L. Carmel. Dancing. It's like, you've never no, seen No, that's, that? that's this. That's doing the ears. No, I'm doing this. It still looked like basically the same. I don't have my hands attached to my head. I'm not doing the ear thing. It's close enough. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it is not. Whatever. <laughs> you can make you can make up your own mind on it. I'm just I'm just telling you the truth. All right, but yeah, there we go. That's uh, <sighs> that was Deus Ex by uh, Seth Zintak, and I gotta be honest, I kind of want to play this game now because I want to see because again knowing the era that I grew up in I was born in 88 and by the time this game came out I was 12 and the biggest pivotal moment I remember like from that I was born right at the tail end of the Cold War I the Berlin Wall came falling down when I was one year when I was one and the Soviet Union was gone by the time I was three. So, for me, I look at... I look at what, uh... 
the most pivotal moment in my life was uh, from like gra- in my grade school, and I got to be honest, the one that sticks out to me is 9/11. 9/11 the most pivotal moment of my school life in terms of political change because it was immediately after that that we became a country that was overly patriotic. I mean, ridiculously patriotic. That's worn off now, though. Oh, yeah. Now, well, again, it's the pendulum swing. And the pendulum swing right now, there's things that are happening. uh, And it's not just one. That's the thing. A lot of people think it's just one pendulum. No, it's multiple pendulums. You go too far one direction on certain things in one extreme, it's going to swing back. And it's inevitable because this is the duality of humanity. The duality of, like, the human species. And... You know, you have you have the extremes that exist right now. You have the you, you know the incels. You know, just like women ain't shit. You know, wi- I'm I'm an involuntary celibate. I want to get laid, but you know, like no woman like no woman can tolerate me because I'm too smart for them. <laughs> and then you have the then you have the basically the female incels who are just like men are men. I, oh gosh, I saw this 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 person on on TikTok basically just being like men are meant to be submissive men are meant to do don't you just hate it when people make the little audi- audible claps every syllable isn't that annoying I mean really is that not annoying I does that fucking... make you not want to just pull out a stop head? yes I actually fucking hate that please stop no I know and you see my whole thing is, that's all this person was doing, except they were doing it backhanded with these long-ass nails, and I'm just like, wow. This person seriously needs to go outside. This person needs to just step outside, touch grass, take in some sunlight. Please, for the love of God. And that's to both of y'all, y'all incels alike, on both sides. I... You know, doing that little clap thing on every syllable doesn't prove your point, and it doesn't make you look smart. Instead, it just makes you look like an attention-seeking, like, moron. I'm sorry, but it does. You're not proving a point. You're just being annoying for the sake of being annoying. It's like people who hit you when they're talking to you. It's like, hey, hey, listen, this is like... It's like, how fucking boring are your stories that you have to start hitting people to keep their attention? And that's the thing. I had that... It's one of my favorite comedians' jokes. I used to do that back in the day, but I learned a very valuable lesson. I was just like, look. Because when people started doing it to me, I was like, oh, God, that is annoying. All right, I need to stop. And I don't really do it anymore. I just, like, if I need to tell someone something and, they're, I, and you know, I need to get their attention, I, like, just tap on the shrub, like, hey, hey, man, um, you... Uh, I was going to ask you about this. Is that okay and all that? I don't just be like, hey, hey, hey. I, I Do I do that at all? The little, like, like arm slap or anything like that? or anything? Mm. Yeah. I, no, like, I think people who do the claps and the smacking you while they're talking to you are people that just don't understand how to express with body language properly. It's like... You know, they don't make their point with any kind of hand motions and body language that makes sense. They have a completely over-the-top annoying way of doing it instead. Yeah, and they do it to stand out instead of doing it to make a point. Because that's one thing that I think is missing a lot. Is like There's no point being made with what a lot of these people are saying. And it's, and it's annoying. It's annoying that they feel like they have to do that uh, again I I don't know what else to say yeah. but that was Seth Zintok with uh, Deus Ex uh, and honestly I want to play it now I really want to play it so have you not got to play it before at all I, well I had played you know like I said I played it back in the day but yeah, okay. it was a long time ago uh, I didn't know the way you were saying it I couldn't remember if well, you no, said I you really, played well, it or I, not I should say again sorry yeah. I really want to play it now and I I want to do the uh, the mod that Enhances everything. Yeah, I want to go back through it again at some point too. Yeah, in the near future. That. 
mate. So I said that about the Vampire the Masquerade, which I bought and still haven't booted up yet. Either. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still doing that thing where you're gauging the games by link. Yeah, I started and knocking out games. I beat like eight games in the past few days. Yeah, short games, by the way. Yeah, they're all short. List. Stuff like Helltaker and Gunpoint. <laughs> All right, well, anyway. They're starting to get longer now, though. I'm starting to get into the four hours worth of time instead of just, like, hour or less worth of time. Yeah. All right, well, that's going to do it, everyone. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Take care, everyone. Peace.